for today's video, I have another jewelry photo tutorial for you, showcasing a few different ways to style jewelry and showing you the lighting I'm using. As talking to a lot of you when it comes to jewelry photography, these two things seem to be one of the biggest struggles when approaching a jewelry photo shoot. Now, jewelry photography isn't actually a service I offer one-on-one, -on -one, and it's not a service that I want to offer as part of the business. I really just enjoy doing it as personal project work and then sharing it with you here on YouTube. Sometimes it's just nice to create for yourself without the judgment of others coming into play. And I think as product photographers, that's why personal projects are so important. I feel like it helps us to relax our creative minds a little. So I'm gonna be sharing with you the behind the scenes of these images here. I really love how they turned out. And to bring you this tutorial, I just wanna thank the sponsor of this video, Ana Luisa. They were so kind to send me some new pieces to showcase in this tutorial. And honestly, I wear their pieces every single day. And something that I really do find so much joy in when it comes to product photography is shooting products that I genuinely love and I use every day as well as working with brands who also have a purpose and a mission behind their business. So Ana Luisa are actually 100% carbon and water neutral and they're climate neutral certified. So what this means is that they are on a roadmap to contributing towards a zero carbon future. So for me, any brand who is environmentally conscious in this way and is actively doing something is a brand that I wanna support. And it's really cool that I get to work with these kinds of brands in my everyday job. They also put their jewelry through a lot of testing to ensure both high quality and safety when their customers are wearing their pieces. So for example, if you're someone who needs to wear nickel free and hypoallergenic pieces, these are not going to harm your skin. They also come in these little pouches, which are absolutely perfect for keeping your jewelry protected and organized. The pouches are also perfect for traveling. So many times I've put just all my necklaces into the same pouch and what ends up happening is I spend about 15 to 20 minutes trying to unknot them because they've just gotten so knotted together and it's not a good time. So I love that the pouches have two little sections that you can separate your jewelry as well. The pieces are also just super affordable for the incredible quality that you receive. So if you need to update your jewelry collection and you wanna support a brand who is also climate conscious and just doing incredible things in that space, you can use my code Amanda Campiani 10 for 10% off. I'll pop that link and all the details in the description box below as well. But now let's dive in to the behind the scenes of how I created these images here. So for the styling for this shot, we're gonna keep it very simple and minimal, just so that it's all about the hoop earrings here. When you're doing jewelry photography, gloves are extremely helpful so that you don't get any fingerprints on the reflective surface. Just means more editing for you in post-production. So I've got these little travertine tiles here. Um, we've got kind of like two sides to this one, but we're gonna go with this one here. These are just from a brand called Prop Face. And I just think these are really great for jewelry photography. Just always look good. Now in terms of my styling, I'm just gonna keep it very simple and place that there. And then kind of like pop that in behind that one there. This just gives, I think, more visual interest by having one of the pieces laying flat and one on the side so you can really see the piece as a whole. So this is a really large roll of diffusion paper. It's 250, it's from a place called Lee Filters. And what this does is that it just helps to soften your shadows. And especially with jewelry, because it has such a big surface that it can cover, it's going to help with your reflections. When it comes to jewelry photography, probably one of the hardest parts is dealing with the reflections. So with jewelry, you have to really think about what is reflecting into the surface and where is that reflection coming from? Ideally, you want to reflect white back into the material. And then it's a matter of putting that diffusion in a place 
that will cover the area you need it to. So what that means is that you just have to pay attention to where this is going to go. Where is the reflection coming from? If you can think about it like that, it's just gonna make your life easier when it comes to producing your scene. And for this scene, I'm only using one strobe light. It's my Godox AD600. So here's the difference between using hard light with no diffusion and hard light with the diffusion paper. So you can see that the image on the right, we still have a slight shadow, but the shadow is very much softened. And I definitely prefer the image on the right for this kind of shot. And here we have the comparison between the raw image and the final image. Looking back, I probably could have warmed up the final image a little bit more, but I have fixed up the reflections on the earrings as well and just overall cleaned the image. So for this scene here, I'm gonna be doing three different necklaces and I've got this uh, big beige backdrop paper roll and just another vinyl backdrop in beige as the background. So the purpose of this photo is to show the difference in the chain links and just like the different options that the brand offers. So I've got three different chains here. I'm just going to nicely space them out and make sure that they're even here as well and that they fall nicely on the side. Okay, so I think that's looking pretty good. We've got nice even space in between each of our necklaces. So I'm gonna move ahead and take that shot. I'm gonna try doing soft light and hard light. And here's my setup for this scene. So I've got a strobe light with a soft box and then I'm further diffusing the light with the diffusion paper. So this is giving me a really beautiful soft look. And so here's the difference between hard light, no modifier, no diffusion paper at all. And the image on the right is using the softbox and diffusion paper. So I very much prefer the image on the right. I think it complements the jewelry a lot more as opposed to the hard light look on the left. And again, here is the comparison between our raw image and our final image on the right. Now for this scene, I wanted to do something with water and a mirror. So this is a little bit more of a complex setup. I have built a barricade around the product, which is a ring that we're shooting. And again, I've gone for a very diffused look. So using that soft box on my strobe light and the diffusion paper. I've also got my whiteboards around the entire scene so that I am dealing with my reflections in production. And then I'm just, like dripping some water onto the mirror to create really soft ripples and seeing what I can capture. And here is how it turned out. So we have our raw image on the left and our final image on the right. I really love the look and this was kind of what I had envisioned in my head as well. I really love how there's that soft ripple coming across the photo, but we still have a little bit of empty space on the mirror where you can see the edges of the water. So this did take me quite a few goes, but I'm happy with the results. So go and check out some of the Ana Luisa pieces. I absolutely adore them. Don't forget to use my code AmandaCampiani10 at checkout. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful and it sparks some easy ideas you can try when it comes to styling jewelry. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I will see you in the next video.